Uh, on the AM report, President Cyril Ramaphosa's economic reconstruction and recovery plan has a strong focus on job creation, infrastructure development and energy security. Now, the plans outlined by the president seek to kickstart change and a rapid economic rebound from the disastrous impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Localization was mentioned at least 19 times in that speech. Good news to 2.4 million to 3.5 million small businesses, but small to medium operators in the construction industry and real estate sector have long complained about being sidelined by bigger and more established enterprises. Let's get you in the picture now. Sean Tennyson is the executive director of Property Point. He joins us to share his hopes and, of course, Sean, your reactions as well to what the president had to say. The major focus yesterday on economic stimulus by government, but you know, even as we were building up to that speech yesterday, the hope was that there would be more focus on timelines for implementation and not so much a rehash of policy. No, definitely. Good morning, Michelle. I think definitely the intent of the speech was quite good, but uh, lacking in the detail around timelines and really how this will be implemented on the ground. I think that if we look at uh, what's happening on the ground, communities are desperate Small businesses are eager to be able to understand how they're able to participate in this new economic recovery. And those type of details needed to be outlined in a bit more uh, detail. Absolutely. Sean, before we continue, tell us about Property Point and, you know, perhaps a bit of its history and the impact the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown has had on the company. So Property Point is a, a social enterprise that focuses on working with uh, small businesses within the entrepreneurship, within the property space, and um, we've been around for about 12 years. Our aim is always to support businesses in order to engage them into supply chains, both with the corporate and in your local economic development space. I think typically over the past uh, couple of years, we've seen quite a keen focus around local economic development and how to really focus on community engagement in order to get communities involved in um, those local supply chains and economic opportunities. Uh, I mean, Sean, it seems like, uh, specifically if we focus on construction, it seems like such an easy way to get local small businesses involved if the big contractors can use subcontractors that are in the communities where they work. But that's not happening. It's not happening on the ground as effectively as it should be. So even though we've got a 30% set-aside policy from government, uh, you still find that there's a lot of these um, site stoppages or protests on site. Um, the president mentioned in his speech the construction mafia. I don't think necessarily all of it is a criminal element. Uh, what we're finding is that local communities are not being engaged effectively. There's no capacity building um, to understand the skills that's needed within those communities. Uh, there's no funding uh, available to support small and emerging um, businesses coming from um, townships and, and local communities to, to be active participants on those sites. And I think that's where we also want to see, specifically where the president's mentioning the infrastructure fund, for them to really focus on actually creating um, uh, or at least ring-fencing funding for, sm for small businesses to be able to tap into those opportunities. What do you make of the excuse from these long-established construction companies that these smaller companies, the local enterprises, uh, you know, that they don't have the right expertise or the, the, the right level of expertise for them to be roped into bigger projects? I think, Michelle, what we're seeing on the ground is that it's a bit of a cop-out. Um, what um, on, on projects that we worked with, you're starting to see that either main contractors are outpricing small businesses, so they're not necessarily um, giving the correct rates, um, therefore creating uh, opportunities for subcontractors that they might have worked with for quite a long time. Um, there's no real assessment of um, the skills that exist within the local communities prior to engagement. Um, and then the, I think the old excuse is always that they can't find these businesses or they don't exist within the communities. Um, and, and I think that's where we're finding that a lot of communities are um, rising up and, 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 and creating these stoppages um, and just want to be part of the economic activity within yeah. those projects. Yeah. I mean, for, for big companies who might be listening to this interview, if that is the excuse, you know, we can't find these smaller companies to rope in as subcontractors, 
Property Point is a good place for them to start. Yes. So, for instance, we work on a national basis um, with, with, with various projects. Um, over the 10 years that we've been in existence, we've, we've worked with over 300 established businesses, got an extensive database. But also, I think key elements is that the support of small businesses generate and create jobs. Um, and typically what we've seen is that the multiplier effect of supporting a small business will ensure that you are creating jobs. We've, businesses that we've worked with have created over uh, 2,600 jobs. There's a contribution back to the GDP, um, and those market access opportunities means that the direct impact to what the president wants to see in terms of job creation can be there through the support of small business. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we talk about our country's unemployment numbers. We saw the last announcement by Statistics South Africa adding another 2.2 million people who lost jobs uh, during that last report. 40-odd percent is where our unemployment rate is sitting now, and I think that's even conservative. So we don't need to overemphasize the importance of the support of smaller businesses. But when we talk about smaller businesses actually getting off the ground, getting the kind of funding that they need off the ground, they are still quite a risky investment for banks. Yes, and I think that what one of the key factors that we need to start looking at is some different non-traditional financiers. I think your banks are always going to be um, quite risk averse when it comes to small businesses. But you need to be able to find solutions that really understands the small market space, that understands the, the delivery of work um, within, uh, within uh, small business development um, and can fund appropriately. So typically, maybe smaller packages of funding, shorter term funding, um, not as stringent in terms of the due diligence that, that needs to be had, um, but focused on delivery um, and execution of work in order to get those businesses across the line. Sean, a final word from you, just in response to the president's address yesterday. How do you see the positive impact, hopefully, of that unfolding over the coming months? I think key things that were positive for me in the, uh, in the speech was the fact that uh, he did allude to strong support through government structures, so he spoke quite extensively around NEDLAC as well, um, therefore meaning that there's a strong engagement of stakeholders. Um, and those elements are quite key. I think he was quite, the four points in terms of where the focus areas needs to be uh, was quite um, decisive. I think it's just lacking the details and the plans, and that's where we need to start seeing how do we, as broader stakeholders in South Africa, contribute to the economic recovery. Absolutely. Sean, thanks so much for your time this morning on the AM Report. Sean Tennyson is the Chief Executive Officer of Property Point as we continue to unpack the President's address in Parliament yesterday that reconstruction.